Hey everybody, we are here with Adam Kokesh at the Conscious Life Expo. Adam, hello sir. How you doing? It's been a blast here, man. It's a really cool audience to bring the message of freedom to. Do you feel that this is the exact type of audience, or is this one of your first times coming into woo-woo land <laughs> with crystals and meditation and consciousness? Because I've been doing this a while and like I'm a little numb to it, but All I remember right. my first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My this is my first Conscious Life Expo, and I wouldn't say it's like the entire target demographic for the message. It's just a cool new audience to bring it to because right. they are people that are a lot more aware about what's going on. The people that are very open-minded that want to seek alternatives. And I, I sort of have two criticisms, and one came up today on the. Uh, Conspiracy theory. Yeah, you saw me. I asked a question. Yeah. We got that on tape. I love that. It was a lot of fun. Um, but but and I really I stopped short of this because the heart of the criticism that I, that I have, as you point out, of the, the woo woo land element is that when people have that negative reaction to waking up to the reality of government, of society, of just you know talk to self talk and like you start talking to yourself more positively. If you don't have a scientific threshold of what is re you know what constitutes reality, and you, if you, you you just lower that, you can let a lot of stuff in and fantasy in reality. What did know. Bill Clinton say? That depends on what your what definition, definition of, of the word is. is, is, yeah, is. Right. So reality, what is reality? Well, it's like what constitutes a, a solid threshold of evidence, really, and and right. I think. What, what you have here, those people who are really passionate about making the world a better place, and they see politics, and they go, oh, it's nasty, it's disagreement, it's fighting, and it's a zero-sum game. And for me as a libertarian, it took me a long time to figure out, this isn't a political movement, it's an anti-political movement. And when you take the beautiful message of universal nonviolence and self-ownership and respect for individual rights into politics, it's like, I'm right, you're wrong, when really it should be those of us who understand this saying, let's lift everyone up, let's right. share this knowledge. And I think a lot of people who are in this crowd have like skipped over that and gone, screw that. And, and when it can be presented in the way that I've been able to with my YouTube channel and with the book Freedom especially, being non-judgmental language, being very direct, very open, right. and also very personally empowering. I think a lot of libertarians miss this side too, that this crowd especially appreciates, which is, okay, if government is trying to control you with propaganda that makes you emotional and blocks rational thinking, what is the opposite to that? What is, well, it's, there's gotta be something to emotional freedom then. And people here are especially appreciative of that message. And if that provides a gateway to them for what you know are the political issues they're afraid of, and instead of being frustrated, they're empowered, right. then to me, I, I think that's a beautiful phenomenon that's a part of what's so, happening here. So, so then, are you saying getting involved and in changing the course of politics versus noticing politics and disconnecting from it? Which one is more like your path right now? Well, right now it's about raising awareness and, and sharing this understanding. Information with a megaphone, anyone with ears that we can hear. Well, for me, it's, it's really all about freedom. It's really all about the book. It, it's the, the ultimate red pill, the ultimate outreach and conversion tool. It's 100 pages. It's a three-hour audio book, you know? You can get it free online in every format at thefreedomline.com, including as an audio book. Website so, one more time is what? Thefreedomline.com. Yeah. So that's, that. To, if you look at like where we are in terms of awareness, if we're at most like a few percent of the population, what was it only three percent needed to? Well, the revolution? we're not even there. You know, we're not even at three. One and a half. Where are, where are we? Regardless, the most important thing is growing that understanding at this point. Right. And there's a lifestyle that goes with that. And if you figure out how to make yourself happier and how to share that with people, right. that's something that brings more people on board, that empowers people, as opposed to the old conflict model. Instead, it's humanity moving forward. Three percent's not going to be enough for what we're talking about. Three percent can change an institution. Three percent can make a social change. Three percent can have a huge impact. But the change that I'm talking about is a fundamental paradigm shift that is the rejection of coercion, the rejection of government to government, to force. control by force. And a lot of people here are already on board with that. They've just like, well, the how and the like, how does that affect me now? How does that right. empower me to be more free? It's kind of skipped over. Well, I was talking to a few people after your, uh, your, I don't know, not a sermon, not a lecture, your panel discussion, I suppose, on I was, conspiracies. I was one of nine people there. You were, you were. But among several people I talked to, it was kind of a consensus. You kind of won the show. Not that it was a competition. No, we're about harmony. But. I said you had the most passionate rants, and I say rant in the positive way, because 
you, you hit your issue and you really got it going. And I wanted you to just expand on one thing real quick. You were talking, and, and uh, the gentleman on the end was, was discussing this as well. The, the difference when you wake up for the first time, oh my God, this is all happening, and then you get angry, and you hold it, and then you, you like, and you're frustrated, and it starts yeah. to, like you just start yeah. radiating negativity. And between you and the other guy saying that, okay, that's awakening number one. Yeah. But there's a second awakening that happens. Can you kind of expand on that? Sure. I, in this? Well, I, I, because it wasn't my panel, I held back on the shameless plug that I'm going to subject you to now. Do it again. Which is that it's chapter nine in this book about emotional freedom and happiness causes freedom. And the relationship with that is very important. Happiness causes freedom. And it's about you know pulling people through that second awakening. So there's sort of like what we obviously know in terms of aggression that's outward, that's very clear, that, that is very much objective, you know, the non-aggression principle, self-ownership. We can prove those things philosophically. Yeah. Now, there's a flip side of this, as I mentioned earlier, with emotional freedom. We don't talk about this because this gets into you know a, a little more. Uh, you know, it requires a little more self-knowledge and introspection, which, which is the, the way you talk to yourself. And when you understand, uh, I, I'm a big fan of Marshall Rosenberg's nonviolent communication. And, and I'm not so sure about the word violent there, but non-judgmental communication. Okay. Communication that is intended to foster connectedness as effectively as possible, right? And now, how we talk to ourselves is often, by his definition, extremely violent. However you want to describe it, but our negative self -talk. I'm my harshest critic most exactly. of the time. I could be doing more. Why couldn't I, you know, like, oh, I got so much to do. I, I need to do more. Well, there's a positive a side drive, to that. Of, but of, but it most, can burn you out, too. That's not what most people do. What most people do, like most people's problems in life, people that, that want to change something in themselves, they want to live differently, they want to be healthier, they want to have better relationships, it comes from a negative self-talk pattern. And it's a judgmental, violent communication. And one of the ways to escape it is to study nonviolent communication. Another way to escape it is through meditation. Another way is just through. I've been positive. trying to get into meditation. What is the tip? Yoga, dude. I love yoga. Just and, do yoga. Yeah, like to me, yoga's been huge for this. Not, I mean, if, if for nothing else, the physical connectedness is very important, just a healthy balance. Body life. to soul to mind. But it was originally a warm up for meditation, and okay. in most yoga classes end with like. You know, a 10 minute lane meditation. Mm. No, 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 just silent lane meditation. And even just getting the practice of it with that connected with kind of a workout or at least a you know, flexibility. Anyway, so the, the, that, whatever it is, there are different avenues to this. But having a positive relationship with, with yourself, coming to a level of acceptance with yourself, doing acid. I mean, I've done acid just twice now, and it's had a profound impact on me in terms of that. And, and, yeah, people and, say ayahuasca, mushrooms, right. and acid. And I've smoked DMT. DMT has been huge too. Right. Not as much as, as acid because there's, there's a distinct feeling. And I, I don't want to make this a, a, you know, a product endorsement, but... Uh, Chapter 11, where yeah, you can right. buy acid from Adam Cope. One <laughs> of the things, <laughs> not available in stores. <laughs> One of the things that you in can theory only. <laughs> what one of the things that it does is it gives you an overwhelming feeling that everything is right with the universe. And when you experience that, it's it also applies internally. And all of these different things are different avenues to self-acceptance. When you meditate and you turn your 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 attention inwards or to stillness in your mind, you cannot in that moment be angry with yourself or disappointed or, or, or you just judgmental. Are. You, you just are, and are. it's beautiful, and you appreciate it, and you love the experience of being alive in that moment. So whatever it takes to get you to there, I, I hope my I, I know my book takes people like a big first step, but everybody's got to go through their own process to you know Zen libertarianism and 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 like turning that positivity that we know that we want conscientiously right. in a world that's voluntary, that's free, based on love and respect. You know, have that same relationship with yourself, and and that's that's the next level of awakening, and, and I think what you're getting at. Yeah, well, for me, the comedian Mitch Hedberg, he had a joke. He'll say, "Oh man, you don't know how hard it is to quit smoking." Yes, I do. I've about as hard day. as it is. No, no. He goes, "It's about as hard as it is to start flossing." <laughs> You know, and for me, meditation is like starting philosophy or quitting. It's just, it, I get that it, everybody that is calm says you got to meditate, but what's the point? Well, let, 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 me, let me help you here because it's, it, it's really, you know it's easy. It's like it's one of those things of living, living deliberately. And I, I, I presented this to you a second ago as if the end goal is self-acceptance. And yeah. you could say that that's a nice part of it. 
but knowing that yoga is good for you, knowing that exercise is good for you, knowing that quitting smoking and starting flossing is good for you is, is one thing, but the reason you don't do it already is a lack of self-love at some level, a lack of self-acceptance. Anything that you do conscientiously that you think is, is, is giving you some temporary emotional gratification instead of real satisfaction and being true to yourself that's holding you back from your potential can in one way or another be traced to or analyzed through the perspective of you're somehow failing in your self-acceptance or, or living in the expression of, of self-love that you have, which is an expression of gratitude for life itself. Right. If you appreciate being alive, you're gonna love the vehicle, whether it's you consider that your heart, your mind, your body, your soul. Right. So it's really been an important part of my life, especially in the last six months, and I never know what the next phase is gonna bring, but this has been the latest growth of Adam Kokesh, and it's, it's almost perfect almost timing coincidence to be at the Conscious Life Expo. If you believe in coincidence. And, and to be able to, yeah, right, to be able to, to bring, you know, that energy and, and, and the value of what wisdom I have to offer to, to this conversation. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say that, that that point that you were making along with the other gentlemen on the panel, it really resonated with me. It's like that first step, fine, we're awake. Now, okay, it's a lot of negativity. So then how do you click that yeah. switch and move it on? Meditation, finding that balance. I think it's important for a lot of activists that are like, okay, now what? I've plateaued, I'm frustrated, I'm getting nothing done, I'll yeah. never be president, I'm not gonna run the companies that change the world, what do I do? And part of it is meditation, finding your balance. Right. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to get to this, and I'll let you get to your food, because I know you're starving, it's been a long day, sir. Um, but I saw a very interesting video with you, I believe it was outside of American Sniper. And yeah. wow, that was amazing. That girl that went shell-shocked and silent for about 45 straight seconds, and nobody moved, and you didn't move, and she didn't move, and nobody said anything, and it kept going. I it was, it was got so painfully beautiful. A 28 minute video of this, but Painfully yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, j just in a nutshell, you served in the military. You know, someone like Sir me may bankers. say, thank you for your service, and you'd say, oh, I don't thank me, right. we're pawns in a game, which is, you know, valid. Well, it's, it's, it's very important to use direct honest language right because using dishonest language is how they control us and it's reflexive to say thank you for your service from people who know better and it's like no be honest be like oh that's unfortunate I mean how much does that change the conversation to, to just it the, completely. as opposed to just bullshitting each other all day long like we invaded Iraq no we didn't you sat at home a bunch of other assholes who were dumb enough to sign up to fight do whatever George W. Bush says, went over to Iraq and committed a bunch of crimes. And trust me, with Russia and I everything else we. in Libya, more people are going to be sent to more places soon. But but your your commentary on, in a nutshell then, with American Sniper is what? In a nutshell. Well, as, as much as we can condense this down to. Yeah, I needed a 28 minute video to capture the conversation. The main thing is that militarism needs to be challenged every time it rears its ugly head, not from the perspective of this idea is bad, or this individual is a liar, in, in Chris Kyle's case, or this war was based on right. lies, or, or even fundamentally that war is a lie, but that war is the greatest crime committed by government, hands down, the most offensive, the most destructive, pretty obvious, and what needs to be questioned is militarism itself and statism itself because they're very connect, very much connected. You want a big state, you get big military. You and get you, big military, they need to use those weapons or else they can't get their next contract. Exactly. So we got to create a boogeyman and go over there. And that's a tough thing for a lot of people to wake up to, but I think at least through eight years of Bush and now six years of Obama, the Democrats can't back this guy. The Republicans can't honestly look at what they... I think we've had both sides, maybe not the come to Jesus moment, but I think they've had a little bit of a reality shift of what war does, what it is, what it isn't. Wait, I didn't like it when he did it, but yeah, now I'm so voting for it when he right, has it. You mentioned that there are other places troops could go. If you take, I, I, and one of the things I, I bring in freedom and in my message now is stepping back and seeing the evolutionary picture. And if you look at the destructiveness of war, if you look at what we've been capable of, it's actually much harder for governments today to get away with full-scale war. I look. I like the example of Syria. When Obama was first trying to get boots on the ground in Syria, what stopped him? Oh, they, they, oh, they had chemical, no, 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 chemical was, weapons. Right, right. I'm like, what about the other weapons? No, but well, we crossed the red, the red line. line, and, and uh, what happened? Uh, don't do that. Troops started doing, you know, the kind of silly, like, 
pulled up a note picture and it says I didn't sign I didn't join the military to fight for Al Qaeda in Syria. It was the alternative media that shut Syria part one down. They're not done trying. And it's be because it's it, people are being more connected with technology right. every day. And the it, lies don't last as long. Statism requires disconnect between individuals because it requires an enforcement class that's the cops and soldiers willing to do violence against peaceful people. Right. The more information is shared. Like you in World War One days, you could say, you know, bad guys over there, go get them. And they go, oh, okay, you know, and they'll And then you read the newspaper and Hearst or, you know. Exactly. We well, ran off Hearst. Oh, well, yeah, they're the bad guys, clearly. We, we all have the truth button one click away in our pockets. If only we could access all the world's well, information in a second. Yeah, no shit. If only. And the troops have this. The cops have this. Right, right, right. And 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 I'm not saying this is like you know the in, instant panacea, but the trend. When you look back, and then you look back at the trend of the war, it's like the worst they like. Gulf we, of Tonkin, like, Pearl Harbor. The worst Harvard, they could do team. was like like World War Two. Like people today kind of lose sense of the scope of World War Two in terms of like the percent of the global population that died. Yeah. You look at the global war on terror by comparison. That's all they can get away. Even Vietnam, like, as, as, and I don't mean to, you know, diminish fifty-five yeah, thousand dead service U.S. service as members. As bad as it was, and, and approximately, like, to put it in perspective, two million, two million dead Vietnamese. Yeah. By the way, the precise number I know is fifty-three something, but whatever. That the scale of war is going down. We've passed that, that high tide, and their government is, is violence for hire. We'll always get away with what it can get away with, as long as there's a market for violence, and the limits of that market for violence are defined by people's tolerance for it, by people's willingness to participate I feel a lot of victims. I feel a lot of energy toward disconnecting from that tolerance, saying, I can't put my energy into this anymore. I can't support this anymore. I so, gotta take the bumper sticker down. I have to go back to answer one of your questions from earlier, because I only got halfway through talking about the book. Oh, yeah. I got a little distracted with that one, you know. But that, that aware, you know, we're so small that the awareness raising is what's important now to grow the community of people who think about free or think like freedom. But the next step is living different, differently, like you said, the personal things that right. make you happier. You know, like, like I said on the panel, growing your own food. I love that. Keeping your family out That's, of the military, you know, asserting your rights. How, how do you speak to, to a to police cops. officer? Exactly. Practical stuff. Yeah. I'm growing food. Practical. How do you save seeds? How do you cut the celery root off, grow the root? How do you grow up a new... Oh, I can eat my own food? I got it. Practical yeah. stuff. And that's your own sphere of influence. So, anyway, on our way out, tell us about the book one more time. Tell us about your radio show, what you're working on, website. Give us all the plugs possible. We're just doing the YouTube channel right now, youtube.com slash Adam Kokesh. And we're doing a new video five days a week, so please check that out. Subscribe to our channel. Share the videos. More importantly, before you take any time for that, read the book. It's free online in every digital format possible at thefreedomline.com. We want this to get out, and it's amazing to be able to give a book like this away for free with our publishing strategy. And it, I can tell you now, the model works. We're making money, we're building the business, because enough people, when they read this, they say, I want to share this message. So take it, get it, be motivated by it. And if you can use it to make money, you can even do that. It's all open source, it's true to the message, and I know that you can appreciate that, so look forward to seeing what happens. Absolutely, and now that you're in my backyard, I, I said this to you when we met in Los Angeles at, at that festival, the United We Stand festival last year. Uh, we might need to have a beverage outside of these conventions from time to time and continue the conversation. But Adam, I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much and good luck. It was a lot of fun.